Hi guys, glory to Jesus Christ. I want to talk a little bit about racism today. Um, so as you know, in the past couple weeks, we've had some really, really, really horrible violence going on here in the U.S. Um, directed at police, but also from police directed toward people who were murdered for little or no reason, depending on the case. And, uh, this hits kind of close to home, not only because of my experience in prison ministry, but also we live directly across the road from two, two uh, cops, two police officers. And I imagine that this has hit them and their families particularly hard. Although, you know, we live in the Baltimore area, so it's not like we're living in Dallas or we're living in, in Baton Rouge, but <clears throat> you never know where these things are going to happen next. I mean, that's one of the reasons why so many people have been getting killed lately is because you never know when a sniper's going to pop up and just start shooting cops. So I think for most of us here in the U.S., we've been thinking about the issue of racism a lot, you know, and how can we fix this problem? How can we fix these racial tensions and, and racial hatred? And it's it's really gotten to the point where police are almost seen as their own race too. And as a matter of fact, there's a billboard that's, um, it's on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. I forget what interchange I saw it at. I think it was the PA Turnpike at US1, north of Philly, that says blue lives matter, meaning police lives matter, which is of course absolutely true, but it really got me thinking about, now wait a minute. We all know, at least most of us, right, that, you know, racism is bad, y'all, okay? But I saw that billboard and it made me kind of think, you know, I actually think that racism isn't necessarily the problem. The problem is race. The concept of race. The concept of different races. I'm coming to believe is inherently one of the problems at the root of this. Because the concept of race inherently divides people, doesn't it, into these kind of arbitrary groups. And so really what we have is kind of another form of segregation when you think about it. Like, take the term African American, for example, right? We used to call black people black people. And then that became culturally insensitive somehow, so we started using the term African American. Well, there's a couple problems with that. First off, not all black people are from Africa or even have descendants that are from Africa. For example, I have a friend, she's from Jamaica. She's a naturalized US citizen, but she was born in Jamaica. She grew up in Jamaica. She hates the term African-American. I was like, why do you hate it? And she goes, well, number one, I'm from Jamaica. I'm not even from Africa. My parents are not from Africa. Number two, I'm a full American. I'm every bit as much American as you are or you know, Bob down the road is. And I feel like when people use the term African-American, they're saying, well, you're not a full American. You're like a special kind of like subclass somehow. Like you're mostly American, but not totally American. You're African-American. Same thing with, you know, Asian-American or Chinese-American, Japanese-American, um, Indian-American. You know, pick, pick your term. Can't we all just be Americans? <laughs> And even more fundamentally than that, can't we all just be people? Remember, Satan is the great divider. God does not divide. God unites. We're all people. Some of us have light skin, some of us have dark skin. Some of us have good skin, some of us have bad skin. <laughs> but the point is, we all are people. We just have skin, and that skin happens to be different colors. So what? I am truly getting to believe that this idea of partitioning into races or even groups of mixtures of different races is the problem. Categorizing people into these little spots is a form of segregation, really. You know, and think about it this way. See, now, if you're white, this might seem really bizarre to you. Think about it this way. Imagine if all women were called female 
hyphen Americans. Be like, excuse me, I'm every bit as much American as, you know, my husband is or my father is or the guy next door is. I'm just an American. And you'd be right. Well, I think it's the same thing with, with, with the races also. And that in our effort to obliterate racism, we've actually made it worse. And we've made it so that now, with all of this horrific violence that's going back and forth between the police and non-police, I don't want to say just police and black people, because it isn't just police and black people. There's other people who are victimized also. As we've had this kind of back and forth going on, now it's almost like we have another race, and that race is called the police. The blues. The blue people. We got white people, black people, we got blue people. And so all we're seeing now is that uniform, or that police cruiser, or whatever, what, what have you. The road to salvation is not division. It's not compartmentalization. Because what is every Christian called to do, ultimately, is to recognize that every person bears the image, the icon of Christ within them. Every person is an icon of Jesus Christ. So, and by the way, Jesus was not white, y'all. I hate to break it to you, but he wasn't. He looked more like Osama bin Laden than he did like JFK. If we are to see the icon of Christ in each other and in ourselves, we have to stop labeling folks. We absolutely have to stop this. And what's really sad is there are probably some people watching this right now who now believe I'm a racist. It's like the hot new thing, right? You know what's funny is part of this idea came to me when I was actually, this is so silly. I was shopping for makeup. Men, don't let me lose you here, but just go with me for a minute. So I was shopping for makeup right now. I was in the department store. I actually didn't buy anything, but I was just looking around at the displays and stuff, whatever. Because I like pretty things. And I looked at this foundation display and men playing along at home, foundation is the stuff you put on your face that's supposed to make your skin look good before you slap on all the colors and other stuff. Okay, so I was looking at this kind of display board of all the shades, right? And they don't have a separate display for, you know, foundation for white people and foundation for African Americans and foundation for Japanese people. They don't, they don't divvy it up like that. It's just colors, right? And you, there's usually a little code, right? So it'll say like, NW20. So the number tells you how light or dark it is and the NW tells you about the undertone, right? It's a neutral tone with a warm undertone. It's a little code. So based on whatever color you are, then you buy your product. So all customers in that sense are treated equally, right? And you could say, well, but Daria, there's some makeup lines that are meant for black people. Yeah, there are. And do you know why those makeup lines had to, had to come into existence? Well, unfortunately, it's because that for a long time, until shamefully recently, at least in the U.S., cosmetic companies made makeup for white people. You know? So, of course, these companies sprang up that said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, I want to look nice too, right? And, you know, they were for people who had very dark skin or they had you know, very, uh, skin with like very strong yellow undertones in it, for example. And that's all well and good. But the point is that I'm in this department store looking at makeup and I'm going, wait a minute. They don't distinguish between white skin and Mexican skin and black skin and, you know, Chinese skin or Russian skin or, you know, Indian skin. They don't do that. They just say, well, here, let's find what color code you are, and then we'll test out some formulas. Why can't we do that with people in everyday life? Why is it that when I see a person who has an ebony complexion, right, who appears as if they might either be from Africa or have ancestry that was, why do I automatically, my brain goes, boom, category, black, instead of that's a human being who has a gorgeous ebony skin. We do this almost automatically now because it's been so 
deeply kind of ground into our collective societal consciousness that, well, races exist along some arbitrary lines. Races exist, but you can't discriminate based on them. Well, I guess I really kind of am beginning to doubt that that's true. I don't think it's a very uh, orthodox way, Christian way to look at things. And so now I have this giant uphill battle, right? Because I'm going, well, if this is what I believe, I've got to start applying this in my everyday life. I have to start looking at all different people and not seeing race. I can see skin color, obviously, but not race. And that's going to be tricky. Because I have over 30 years of habit to undo. But I really do feel like this is the way forward. So if you're at all interested by this, motivated by this, inspired by this, pick your word and you want to join me. Let's see if we can do this. Because until we do, I really believe this, until we do this, until we just see the humanity and we don't apply these labels, I'm convinced that this problem is only going to get worse and worse and worse. We think that we're so advanced now, right? We think that we're, you know, racism is an ugly smear on America's past. Well, yeah, it certainly is, but we still have that smear on us right now. And in our efforts to reverse the trend, I believe we've made it worse. So we got to pray about this. We got to pray about this real hard. And we got to pray for mutual compassion and understanding and respect among all people, regardless of the color of their skin, regardless of if they're law enforcement or not, regardless of all of that. We have to seriously pray hard every day because this is going to be a knockdown drag out battle. But if we don't fight it, I feel like we're standing on the edge of chaos, of a partial, uh, a potential martial law situation. And if there's another execution of police officers or another officer involved shooting of an unarmed individual, particularly if that person is black because most of the victims in recent memory that we've heard about on the news have been black, particularly if that happens. This is a powder keg and she gonna blow. So join me in prayer about this, please. Please, please, please. And thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. I'll see you next time. Bye.